Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Moina Bass Fishes. I am Jim Moina, professional bass fisherman and have been since 1995. And before that, a very um, uh, enthusiastic advocate and participant in the sport of bass fishing and all types of fishing, really. So in this video, I want to discuss Eurasian water milfoil. Okay, this plant is not native to North America. It is classified as an invasive species by government agencies, whether it's federal or state, well, at least state level. I don't know if the federal has a classification on that, but I know it seems like every state that has this plant classifies it as invasive, that I know of anyways. So I'm just here to say that um, yes, it's an invasive species, it's not native, but I really think it's gotten a bad rap um, as far as being a negative uh, component of any ecosystem. In fact, I'm here to really say that I think it's a positive component to, a, to a, an aquatic ecosystem. In the many lakes that I've fished around the country, and I mean big lakes, small lakes, lakes with high fertility, lakes with low fertility, you know, southern reservoirs, lakes with high water clarity, low water clarity, and all different uh, ge uh, geological type settings. Um, it's out, Eurasian water milfoil in a lake is directly correlated to the um, success of, of a fishery as far as producing numbers of sport fish. So, and that can't be denied. It's, it's just been universally proven time and time again by fishermen fishing that when the lake, when a lake, a given lake has a lot of or has, you know, a decent amount of coverage of Eurasian water milfoil, you tend to have good fishing. And when you go in there and you eradicate it, then you have bad fishing. And it only comes back if the weeds, if the aquatic vegetation or the Eurasian milfoil that somehow comes back, then the good fishing returns again. So that's pretty... I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. That the Eurasian water mill falls good habitat. So why are we spending all this effort, which means we're spending time, we're spending money, like in Minnesota, we spend money to pay people to sit at public landings to tell people to take their weeds off their trailer so we're not spreading Eurasian water mill foil or any other aquatic. I mean... I, this video is just about Eurasian water milfoil. There's other invasion species, so maybe, you know, they're also checking for zebra mussels. They're also checking for, you know, they want to pre prevent, like, the spread of horny stone, stonewort, which um, I'm not as familiar with that plant, so I'm not, I'm not here to talk about that particular plant. I'm not here to talk about the zebra mussels, maybe in a different video. But we're, but we're spending money on herbicides that we put in our lakes to kill off the the Eurasian milfoil, we're just, I, I just wish that it's, it's a waste. It's a waste. And it's frustrating for me to see this and to still see the agenda of this being pushed. To sit, when I pull, when I pull into a, a boat landing and it says, on a big sign, it'll say, this lake contains, Eurasia, you know, the invasive species, Eurasian water milfoil, like it's a, da like it's a danger. Uh, the, you know, the general public is going to buy into this. Uh, and it's, we got to stop spreading this about Eurasian water milfoil because it's, it's healthy for our lakes. You know, if, if you don't have this, you know, every lake has a given level of fertility, right? So if you don't have it expressed in terms of Eurasian water milfoil, it's going to express it itself in maybe suspended algae or some other form. There's going to be some kind of, some kind of growth going on in there. 
And I'm just saying, why are we concerned about Eurasian water milfoil? Because it's, <laughs> it's, it's great habitat for fish. It's proven to be that. Um, there's very few exceptions where that may not be true. If you have a shallow body of water, now I can, under, I can understand. Here's a very specific situation where you may want to do some kind of control. If you have a very shallow body of water where essentially the plant can grow from shoreline to shoreline uh, without any open water in the middle or anywhere, yeah, perhaps maybe that's where there's a situation where you might want to do some kind of control. But to just throw it anywhere we see it is a waste of time, waste of money. Um, and, you know, you might have homeowners on a lake complain that, oh, I can see it out there. That's ugly. Or it washes up on their beach or whatever. It's like, you know, to, to a certain point, uh, you know, I can understand why a person might want to have a boat lane out to the open part of the lake. I can understand that. Let's, let's control that through mechanical harvesters. Like, just like we mow a lawn, let's just, you know, they have mechanical harvesters that can harvest this stuff. So if you need, if you want a boat lane from your weedy bay, back of your weedy bay out to the open water, I can understand. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. And, and in fact, that boat lane in itself creates edge habitat, which uh, a lot of fish actually benefit, benefit from edge habitat. So that's not such a bad thing. But creating that boat lane with aquatic herbicides is not good. That it's just, it just, it just makes a dead zone there of nothing. And what are, do we really know exactly? Well, I'm not going to go there because I was going to bring up the, the idea that do we really know what's in these chemicals? I don't. So I'm not going to say they're dangerous to the environment because I really don't know. Obviously, they're, to me, they're dangerous to the ecosystem because you're taking out, you're just making a dead zone in the lake right there. How can that be any good for, for, for the, the ecosystem? It just makes no sense that it would make any good at all. So let's just, please, this is all I'm saying. You know, I get, I do get this question from time to time. What do you think about the original milfoil in the lake? Or what do you think about the zebra mussels or this or that? And that's what I think about your original milfoil. It's, it's a benefit to our uh, fish populations. Everywhere we go where there's a healthy Eurasian milfoil um, crop growing in the lake, you see excellent fishing. It's just, it goes hand in hand. It's not hard, to, it's, it's just obvious. It's not even, it's not arguable. You can't argue it. You cannot, it's, it's, it's a fact. And to sit there and spend all this money to eradicate it is an absolute complete waste of time the brainwashing of the public has got to stop take Eurasian water milfoil off of the boat landing signs that are presenting it as some kind of evil uh, uh, form of life because it's not it's it's a benefit I don't see you know one thing one thing that they've uh, used to support their idea of eradicating milfoil, Eurasian milfoil is they say it's going they say it eliminates all the native plants in the lake. It does not do that. I've seen I fished so many different lakes with Eurasian milfoil and I run into all the normal native plants that I always run into in lakes that don't have it. It's a complete that's a complete misnomer, a complete just false it's fake news. <laughs> to use today's modern term, fake news, all right? So, um, yeah, that's my video. Eurasian milfoil is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Don't hate it. The environment likes it. The aquatic 
ecosystem likes it. The ecosystem does well with it. Even the native, and all the, all the native, I'm talking all the native organisms, they interact, interact with the Eurasian water milfoil. It all goes hand in hand and it's, they're all doing well. Prove me wrong, I'll listen. I, I'm not afraid to be proven wrong. Send me a comment. If you know of a scientific study that says, hey, here's why Eurasian milfoil is bad, I want to see that scientific study. Send me a link to it in the comments. I'd love to read it. I'm all about further furthering my education and I'm all about finding the truth in every aspect of the universe. So anyhow, that's my video. Thanks for watching. Over and out.